Welcome back to the Arcane Forge, my name's Josh, and today I've been feeling a little bit bad. Over the Halloween period, I decided to make a video called the Top 5 Most Horrifying Players That You Might Encounter In Your Role Playing Game, D&D, what have you. I felt kind of bad that I left out the Dungeon Master, the Storyteller, the GM, in all of that, focused directly on the players. I thought, hey, no one's immune to criticism, so today is time for the top five most terrible dungeon masters that you might find in your role-playing campaign. Before I get started with the list though, make sure to leave a little like down below, favorite this video and share it with someone who you think fits the bill of one of these characters. We're only just starting out guys, so anything you can do like that really helps us to grow. Anyway, with the faff out of the way, we can start the video with number five. Five. So number five is the overly involved DM. How do you get to be overly involved as a DM? Like you're creating everything, you're creating the story, you're creating the world. Well, the overly involved DM isn't satisfied with that. They might choose to maybe have a character, an NPC, like a tavern owner or a villain who just can't help but monologue about the extended world that the DM has built. They unnaturally happen to know just a little bit too much about the lore and history, maybe the cosmogony of everything that's happened, just so that the DM can let everybody know how hard they've worked. The overly involved DM might also choose to create an NPC, a non-player character, that follows the group around. They'll go on the adventure with them and essentially be just another party member, allowing the DM to play a character as well as being the DM. Now the problem with this is that they already get to be just about everybody. The DM not only creates the world, but gets the players every single character that the main players will interact with. And not being satisfied with this, they choose to make a character of their own. Now the players in a story have to pretty much be the stars of the show. Everybody else is pretty much second fiddle. With the DM making a character who crops up so constantly as to be a staple member of the group, it detracts away from the other players whose story this actually is. As well, the DM's character might not be able to help sharing knowledge that players shouldn't have access to. The DM, after all, wrote all the traps and puzzles in the world. They know all the maps, all the layouts. And if they give too many little hints here and there, it might take away from some of the surprise, some of the suspense, some of the feeling that the DMs actually work really hard to make. Maybe this character is way more powerful than all the others for plot reasons, and that just takes away some of the gravitas, some of the impact of the actual player characters, and won't make them feel quite as special, which is basically the whole aim as a DM. Now, I'm not saying that it's a bad idea for DMs to create characters to tag along with groups groups. Occasionally, they can be really useful to motivate characters to go and do something or introduce strange and interesting concepts to a party. Maybe the players go to a horrible dimension where they can't breathe and there happens to be an NPC who can put a bubble of air around them, causing the players to have to stay in a certain location that continuously moves with this NPC for risk of drowning. That can be a really interesting encounter, but if that character then follows the party for the rest of the whole adventure, then the DM is pretty much signaling that they want to be a player instead of writing the campaign. It's nowhere near as fun. So before you make an NPC that's going to follow the group around, just make sure that they're serving a function, they're serving a role, they're causing some sort of plot arc, they are there for a reason and not just so that you can get to play a character as well as playing everybody else in the whole world, because that's just greedy. Four. Number four is something that I suffered with massively when I first started playing D&D. Being the timid GM. Someone who's so concerned with everybody having a good time, that they just go, uh, yeah, okay, okay, you do that. Doesn't matter how crazy or wild the players want to be, there always seems to be an excuse to let them do it. Oh, what, your your movement speed is only 30 feet, but you want to charge the other end of the room? Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, sure, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the ground's really slippery, so you can, you can slide there. You want to swap weapons midway through combat and attack just about everybody in the room? Uh, yeah, sure, of course you can do that, it'd be great. The problem with this kind of DM is that although they're really, really considerate and they're working hard to make the players enjoy themselves, they end up taking away the threat and the impact of their actions from the players. The players might as well just be describing what they would do in a given situation. There's no rules, there's no consequences to their actions, because things will always kind of go their way. The game ends up becoming really unbalanced and actually less fun to play, because things going wrong is pretty much at the crux of what makes D&D fun. Things go wrong and then the players adapt and they end up making something humorous or something with gravity, an interesting plot. They develop, they struggle, they learn. If everything's too easy, everything's too light, and the players always get their way, then no one's really going to be enjoying themselves. They might end up getting bored, might end up thinking that's what D&D is, and never play the game again. Always make sure to say no occasionally to your players, because that's what the rules are there for. They even make it a little bit easier for you. Just like, it's in the rules, you can't do that. Now feel free to bend the rules occasionally if it fits the plot better, but don't just bend the rules for players. Bend the rules if they make sense. 
three. Number three is the Helicopter DM. Definitely not flying anywhere, but he's definitely not landing either. A Helicopter DM is someone who can't help but change their mind every two seconds about what they want to be doing with the game. Maybe they don't want to be playing the system that they started off with because, oh look, something more exciting just came out. Maybe your GM watches a brand new film and thinks, oh, well, screw fantasy, I've just watched this sci-fi film, now we have to play sci-fi. By the time they've written their campaign and new fantasy films come out, they're excited by that and they want to play fantasy again. Maybe someone just bought them a brand new rules book for a totally different system and they think, oh, D&D, why are we playing D&D when we could be using the hero system? Why are we playing 5th edition when we could be playing 1st edition or 4th or 3rd? They're all so different. The helicopter GM gets distracted way too easily and it impacts massively on the game. Players might have to create a character, which will then get adapted into an entirely different rule set, or abandon characters altogether once they've decided to get invested in them, and they'll get disappointed over and over again as they start and stop, never really getting anywhere in an adventure. They might end up finding that they shouldn't really get invested in characters at all because the GM is just going to throw the table over and start fresh next week. At the end of the day, if you're a GM like this and you just keep getting bored, maybe you're not excited by things, but maybe you're bored by your own writing. Maybe you're not interested with what you're doing, and you should stick to being a player for a while. Have somebody else entertain you. You can always come up with wild and crazy ideas and someone can keep you in check. Or instead of making large spanning campaigns that you never really fulfill, why not have a load of throwaway games, short adventures that you can dip in and out of that no one's really going to get too invested in because come next week you're going to decide to do something entirely different. Remember players end up spending money on miniatures and books. They spend their time and care creating and loving characters that they invent. So don't turn that on its head and don't throw it away. If you are really impatient, just embrace it. Become a player, enjoy the game, and let somebody else have be a DM for a while. Two. Number two are GMs with favoritism. Now who knows why this favoritism occurs? It could be because they're playing with their partner. Their girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, what have you, might be sitting at the table and they can't help but push everything their way. Give them all the gold, give them all the cool items. If their partner comes up with a cool idea, suddenly that's what you're playing next week. Maybe the DM thinks that one character concept is so fascinating that they can base an entire story around them. That character becomes the central protagonist in this huge adventure. I mean, how wrong could it go? It's just like every book we read with a central protagonist. Everybody else is a secondary character. Well, no one likes to feel like they're second fiddle. You don't want to leave people out and exclude them while you and this other player that you happen to have a favorite of leave to other rooms, have secret conversations about what's going to happen and base a story entirely around them. It's not fair to the other people who are equally putting the effort in and playing the game. All the players deserve the same amount of respect and care that that favorite does. As I said before, players are the stars of the show and to be relegated to a second fiddle character while you watch someone get all the glory can just be really disappointing. Why are you going to turn up week after week just to contribute to somebody else's story? Having a central character that fits a particular adventure, one quest, one session, something like that, can be really cool, like delve into their backstory and make it really important. But to have one character be the central theme behind an entire campaign can be massively disappointing to the people who didn't manage to make your cut. And if your favourite is in some way unrelated to the story itself, that's even worse if they are like your partner or your best friend or something like that. You're just going to show a massive inequality to the rest of the players. They're going to feel pretty looked down on. One. Finally, the worst of the worst. Number one is the overbearing DM. This person can't help but say no. In a game full of limitless possibilities where you can do literally anything you can possibly imagine, this guy's decided that his story has plot armour. They're going to railroad their players down an adventure that they have created and nothing else can occur. Players might as well be watching a movie because if they decide to go to the back of that spooky mansion, scale a drain pipe and find a back window to get into this building, the DM's just going to say no because I've written the entrance if you go through the main door so I won't accept any other answers. They might start a campaign off by saying I need these roles filled for my story. D&D is all about dealing with the consequences of allowing people to run amok in your story, picking whatever classes they might like, whatever backgrounds, Provided that it fits the overall theme of the story, they should be able to be whatever they like. You have to roll with the punches because that's why it's fun for you, not just telling people this is what's happening. Because that's not a game, that's reading a book or it's watching a film, it's watching TV. They have similarly no control over what's going on. At the end of the day, the overbearing DM may be a fantastic writer, in which case I suggest just write a book. Because if you're always denying solutions to players, it's not fun. They're not going to enjoy themselves. And it's 
ultimately not D&D. &D. Anyway, that's my list of the top five worst DMs that you might encounter in your role-playing game, specifically in Dungeons & Dragons. Now, if there's someone that I missed out here, someone that you've played with that you think was absolutely god-awful and I didn't put them on my list, make sure to leave them in the comments section down below. It'd be fantastic to know what you think is worse than these guys. You can also leave a comment on our social media. You know, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Links are down in the description below. And remember, if you like these videos, make sure to leave a little thumbs up, favorite this video, and subscribe for more content like this every week. Until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you.